The visible satellite imagery showing clouds and extensive snow cover across much of the northern plains as we head into the depths of winter. A 998 millibar low continues to spiral around in Minnesota, where snow emergencies were declared yesterday in the Twin Cities, and schools continue to remain closed. Further out to the west, blizzard warnings in all of the Dakotas, except in the Red River region, as strong cold advection combines with 40-knot winds picking up dry snow. And guess what? More problems are on the way. I'll go ahead and give you a quick sneak peek at what's coming our way. A Arctic high developing over Alaska, 1056 millibars in that system, and looking at the thickness, the red dotted lines, that shows the core of Arctic air over the Beaufort Sea into Victoria Island, but a big chunk of it extending over Alaska. We don't really see it on this graphic, but it is reflected in the higher sea level pressures. For this afternoon, let's take a look at the surface analysis. We're looking at two major air masses, one on the east coast, temperatures from the 30s all the way up to the 50s, and in the central U.S., a reinforcing shot of cold air. That's associated with those blizzard conditions up there in North and South Dakota, and some very strong winds all the way down into Oklahoma. The strongest winds appear to be about 46 knots at Dodge City. And there's that low that we talked about over Minnesota, just spiraling around and sort of a nucleus for all these snow showers. And then out to the west, a large plateau high. This is kind of a area where cold polar air is anchored over the Great Basin area in the Rockies and has been, been reinforced during the overnight hours as that radiational cooling takes place. And it's a very efficient process in those high desert areas. In the valleys of California, some fog starting to set up. Same story in the Columbia River Basin and even in the high desert, some fog showing up at this hour. Well, I'm sure everybody's wondering about Alaska. Let's take a look up there. Here you're witnessing the primordial beginnings of a significant Arctic outbreak, one that will have a big effect on the weather in the U.S. as we move into Christmas. Currently, this air mass is along an axis from the interior of Alaska all the way to Victoria Island, Banks Island, and the coldest part of that air mass are these minus 30 degree temperatures out there around Fairbanks but the lower thickness values are out here, and that's indicating a much more significant depth of cold air in that region. Further south in southeastern Alaska, you can see the strong pressure gradient out there along the mountains near Haines and Skagway. Temperatures are rather mild, 30 degrees, but the winds are out of the northwest, and this is only gonna get worse as we go into the weekend, looking at a significant wind event especially in the straits there, We're expecting gusts up to 60 knots out around Juneau, and the temperatures will come down significantly, especially towards Monday and Tuesday. You can see here the typical temperatures for Juneau, looking at, uh, let's see here, 40, 34 degrees for a typical high, 26 for a typical low, and they're expecting teens all day around Monday and Tuesday, and that puts them well below the typical daytime low, and Juno would be located about right in here. As we go further to the east, a Bear Clinic low near Coral Harbor, moving off to the northeast towards the big barotropic graveyard off of Baffin Island, and there's a rather mild high pressure area across Quebec, bringing some southerly flow up towards Hudson Bay and into Ontario. Temperatures are rather mild, 28 to 32 degrees. Almost saw a bit of rain around North Bay, but as you go further to the west, that does cool off and the column becomes supportive of snow. So let's take a look at how this is going to unfold. We roll the GFS forecast forward. You can see that 1060 millibar high right up there in Yukon. That represents the bulk of the Arctic air. And it builds southeastward into the Canadian prairies and the north central U.S. This is going to be the 20th of December. So we're looking at about Tuesday. 
and that cold air is already flowing southward. And by the 21st and 22nd, we're going to see shot number two coming south. That's it right there. And that will be even colder. So still looking at some very high pressures back behind it going into the 22nd, 23rd. That's going to be a classic blue norther coming right through Texas, moving south probably a good 60 miles an hour. And take a look at this area right here. You're going to see that get some upper air support and form a baroclinic low. There it is coming together and developing along the east coast of the U.S. So also a nor'easter coming up for the 23rd and 24th. So this will be a pretty significant Christmas holiday. And going into the 25th and 26th, cold across much of the country and looks like a third round on its way south. So as we said back on, I think it was Monday or Friday, we're not going to be done with this after Christmas. There's going to be more cold air on the way south. So that's the last frame I have for the morning of the 26th. And here's how it looks in terms of temperatures. We start out with today's chart. And if you want to see when this is for, just look at the bottom right part of the screen. This is going to be 0900 UTC, so that's earlier this morning. And at the very top left, there's the scale of degrees Fahrenheit. So as we go into the green shades up here in the Dakotas, that's going to be the teens all the way down into Colorado, teens out there too. But that's mostly in the higher elevation. So let's roll this forward and watch the fun unfold. So here's our current outbreak making its way south. And you can see some oscillation of the temperature field due to diurnal heating. That's the diurnal heating on the 18th, which is uh, Sunday, I think. And here comes the first outbreak of cold air coming into the Central Plains on the 20th of December. So that comes south. And you can see the next outbreak coming together up there in Montana. Temperatures down to minus 10 up around Great Falls. And that will come south. Let's roll that forward some more. Oh, yeah, that really jumped. So we went from this on the evening of the 21st at about 6 p.m. Central to this at 6 a.m. on the 23rd. So that cold air is definitely flowing south. We know that there's some upper air push with that for sure. Of course, the 10... 63 millibar pressures definitely those help out quite a bit there's an old rule of thumb where if you have 1060 that's guaranteed to make it to the gulf of mexico so that's going to blast southward into texas big change on the 22nd going into the 23rd and the core of the coldest air you can see minus 10 to minus 20. Again, this is a GFS forecast, so this may not be too accurate, 168 hours out, but it does show the depth of the cold air, the very cold conditions up that, in that region, and some very frigid air in northwestern Minnesota. So that's going to be on Festivus, the 23rd, and that cold air will continue flowing into the Midwest region can see some minus 20s out there in Wisconsin for Christmas Eve, later on Christmas Eve, and that will continue pushing into the eastern U.S., but up there at the very end, that, that's round number three, and I kind of suspect since there's not a whole lot of bulk of that cold air in Montana, I think this may be heading more towards the Great Lakes. I don't know that for sure, but that's kind of how it looks this far out, and beyond 240 hours we don't really know for sure. we got to wait a few days for the models to resolve those details. And with that cold air, there's going to be snow for a lot of the country. So let's roll that forward and see how that unfolds using the pivotal weather charts. Here's our next outbreak on the way south. You can see the temperature gradient or the pressure gradients up in that region. 
So it is going to be somewhat dry. We do have the lake effect snows out there with the northwesterly flow. That's always a given. And snow up there in Maine with the cold conveyor belt wrapping around from the east. So going into the 19th and the 20th, yeah, some snow bands developing there in Kansas with that strong warm air advection starting to set up. Well, the main warm front well to the south, but there's going to be a secondary warm front somewhere in here, and that probably is going to help support those snow bands. So those get carried off to the east with the upper air support. We get that outbreak on the 20th, and that's not the big one just yet. So that filters on in, and there's the big one up there in Montana. And that comes south. Of course, that has some snow with it. And that'll continue moving south. Snow all the way down to Oklahoma and even Texas. And I'm not going to get too hung up on the amounts because the models are notoriously inaccurate with that this far out. We do know that there is going to be some snow across much of the central U.S., maybe not some terribly heavy amounts. That's not very common in these strong cold blasts, but certainly could cover the ground from Kansas to Missouri, maybe Arkansas. And that is some strong cold air advection into North Texas for the evening of the 22nd. So... Along the coast, as we get that coastal interaction with the Gulf Stream waters, the warm currents, that's going to get the precip fields expanding going into the 23rd, and we get that nor'easter developing, get the cursor out of the way there, and looks like some convection, some cold rain showers along the coast, maybe some thunderstorms, and some bands of freezing rain in between in the Piedmont area. And that'll spread up into the northeastern U.S. for the 23rd into the 24th. And that looks like a mess from New York to Boston up to Portland for the early hours of the 24th. And I can see a lot of sleet up there being indicated by the models in Maine. But fortunately for Christmas Eve, some rapid clearing working in. There's that ridging, a very cold polar high, and of course, changes on the way up north with the next Arctic air outbreak developing. And that's it coming together. This is getting into that crystal ball territory, so I'm not going to worry too much about the details, but something is going to be coming south around the 27th. And that does look like it's heading more for the Great Lakes area. And already I can see just rain up there for the Arklatex. So not much cold air coming down initially. And a little nor'easter there for the 29th. And then we get up to New Year's. But it looks like a very cold pattern all the way into New Year's. There's another blast of 1051, 1054 millibar high. But this could be the cold bias. GFS does develop a lot of those towards the 250 to 300 hour point. So that looks interesting, but I'm not going to gamble money on that kind of outcome. It's interesting seeing the seeing 2023 appearing in the models so we're about done with this current year and it will be a cold end to 2022 and that's all for this edition of forecast lab some of our acoustically inclined listeners musicians so on may have noticed some of that ground loop hum at the very beginning of the video I switched out the, uh, we were using an SM58 microphone and I switched over to the Rode NT1. In the middle of the program, we haven't, haven't used that microphone in several months, but we're back on it now. And hopefully that gets rid of that annoying noise. Uh, nothing new on the Patreon front. I was hoping we would get a few more Patreon subscribers. That's always good to see, especially coming up in the holidays. So thank you very much to all of you who are supporting. My plan is when we get a lot of new Patreon subscribers, I'm going to try to shift to doing this maybe four times a week, maybe five times a week, and we'll just kind of gradually increase the frequency. So that'll be something to look forward to. Hopefully we'll get to that point before too long. Hope you have a great Friday night. Stay warm, and we'll see you back here on Monday 
for the supporters and Wednesday for everybody else. Take care. We'll see you. Bye-bye.